bill, House Bill 668. This is transferring the medical use of marijuana program for, from Department of Public Safety to Department of Health. Okay, Department of Public Safety. Thank you very much, uh, Chair Luke and members of the committee. I'll keep this very short. What this bill does is it transfers the responsibility for administering the medical marijuana program from our department to the Department of Health. If this bill passes, we will, we will give the Department of Health uh, every, every bit of cooperation we can. I just want to point out two things. Uh, first of all, we have no general funds for this program. The way we fund this program is through user fees. So fees, a registration fees, $25 per, which we deposit in a, a revolving fund. And I think in order for the Department of Health to make this program work, they're going to have, they're going to need some authorization to create a revolving fund. So we would propose that as an amendment to this, to this bill. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, D. Heard. County of Hawaii Police Department. Um, Lawrence Boyd. You know, instead of me reading through um, the names of all these, maybe I'll just ask members here who want to testify in this bill. Okay, that might be better than reading an inch full. Yes. Oh, maybe. Let me. Okay, go ahead. If you could state your, because we're, um, uh, I don't know exactly where it is. So if you could state your name and uh, give your testimony for the edification of the members. My name is Terry Heaty, and I'm a medical marijuana patient. I've been uh, in the program since it started. And the reason, one of the reasons I really came, became public about this, because for years, I didn't do anything out in public about marijuana. I, quite frankly, I worked for the government. I had kids. You know, you don't talk about, you know, any kind of thing when you're with kids with marijuana. It's drugs and all this kind of stuff. However... I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, and they started prescribing me all kinds of medications. All right, so I went ahead and I took all their medications, and I did everything I was supposed to do, and I took all their shots, and I mean I did all of this stuff. And all that one day I woke up, and it turns out that my medical records had been released to a Paper and Hero. Well, not maybe not my records, but the fact that I was a medical marijuana user. That went to the paper in Hilo. Who did that? Law enforcement did that. I have had trouble with this program since the beginning because they keep criminalizing me. I have never been a criminal until now. And what I'd like you to do is help me out. I want you to take this program and put it under Department of Health with people that are used to dealing with patients instead of criminals. Okay, that's the bottom line for me. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. But if you could, you know, I mean, you got to think about what happened to me. Like in Kona, for example, I went over to Kona, and I was going for a visit, and I kept getting these second looks, you know, and I have been on the front of the paper. I've been in magazines. I've been in radio. So I'm used to young kids walking by and going like this, you know, and making little, you know, jokes and stuff. But most of the times, adults aren't giving me the stink eye when they come by. Well, it turns out that over in Kona, uh, one of the police chiefs had decided to take my picture. I know I'm gorgeous. <laughs> Irresistible. But he took it to the Rotary Club, and he pops it up and says, and this woman testifies every year at the state legislature. Ew. <laughs> I'm here again. But I would like to stop testifying at the state legislature, and, if, and I'll wrap this up. I know it took too long. But... Just put this over first in Department of Health. And then let's have the medical people, or people that are used to dealing with medical professionals, kind of manage the program. It will help everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, Ms. Lichty, you want to yes. testify? Good afternoon, Chair Luke and uh, members of the committee. <clears throat> Thank you for hearing this bill today. I'm Pam Lichty, and I'm with the Drug Policy Action Group, and I will keep this brief. 
Um, I was also co-chair of the Medical Cannabis Working Group, which was convened in uh, 2010 and made a report to this body. And moving the medical marijuana program from the uh, Department of Public Safety and Narcotics Enforcement Division to DOH was one of the top four recommendations of that group. Um, so obviously we're strongly in favor of it. I did want to point out what I think is a, a serious drafting error in, in the bill, and it's in uh, Section 4. And the way it's written now, it says, all rights, powers, functions, and duties of the Department of Public Safety are transferred to the Department of Health. And I don't think that's what they meant to say. I think maybe a qualifying clause like relating to the medical use of marijuana should be inserted there to echo the language in Section 2. <laughs> So thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Answer questions. Change. Okay. Uh, any other testifiers? If yes, please come up. Hi, aloha. I'm Dr. Daniel Susat. I'm a medical doctor with a master's in public health, and it's become clear to me in 30 years of practicing cannabis therapeutics, among everything else, that the, the war on drugs is a failed public health policy. It's caused a lot of insecurity and, and um, violence and many deaths around the world. Cannabis shouldn't, could, should be under health uh, rather than law enforcement. Uh, every other state that has medical cannabis has it under health, except for Vermont, which copied Hawaii's lead you know, many years ago. So the, the, the norm is to have it under Department of Health, and that's, that's where it works best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I really don't have any intention of keeping it brief, but I'll try to. Uh, because this is the only time I get to talk to the legislators in the House about uh, the various issues surrounding the uh, wonderful herb, marijuana. Uh, marijuana is actually kosher in the Jewish Bible, and I need to start with that. It's not a demon herb that was created to destroy people's lives. When they say it's a failed program, what it means is that the law enforcement effect upon society and upon the individual is worse than the effect of the drug. So that's what we, they mean by it's a failed program. Uh, last year, the state lost over $69.25 million. That's a lot of money. in uh, uh, general excise tax to the underground market and uh, using the government statistics. The census, the people over 18, 57%, and multiplying that out by one pack of cigarettes a month. One ounce of marijuana, one pack of cigarettes is an ounce. 1.1 ounces. That's what they say is a reasonable amount for a marijuana patient to last. I don't know how long they expect that to last, three months or six months or nine months. It takes quite a while to grow a plant. When you grow a plant that's uh, what they call a 90-day wonder, that only gives you about a quarter of an ounce. You need four of those to get an ounce. It's one pack of cigarettes. So there's a lot of bad things about the current marijuana laws particularly the mer medical marijuana laws are designed to entrap individuals, to terrorize them and put them in jail, like happened to me. I was uh, invaded by a SWAT team in the middle of the night. My family was abused and molested, and I was denied medical care. I was supposed to be in the hospital at that time. Instead, I was in jail. Uh, a lot of other things went wrong there, too. So we lost $69 million. And I don't know what the purpose is of having marijuana illegal. It became illegal in 1939 based upon a bunch of law enforcement lies. If you watch the movie Marijuana Madness, I'm sorry, you're going to think it's um, crazy. We're just talking about the issue of transferring the issue of moving it the medical 329 marijuana section. out of part 10, I mean part 9. The police have a bad attitude towards people. They don't have a healing attitude. They have, I'm going to get you attitude. They're not like a fireman that runs into a burning house and saves lives. They run into a house and they harm people. So they have no expertise. They don't have the attitude. They don't have the intelligence. And that's where you get your medical information from. You get your medical information from cops instead of from physicians. The when the DEA looked over the law, marijuana, the DEA administrative judge said that marijuana was the safest medicine on the market. It got appealed because, and it got thrown out because the FDA wasn't involved. 
it, the <coughs> marijuana laws are set up to harm society and to harm individuals. Okay, again, and we got to get it out we, of the cops. Yeah, if we got to get the cops. About, I'm finishing right now. Yeah. We got to get the cops 100% out of health care. That's what's required by Roe versus Wade. Thank American you. American Constitution and the Constitution of the State of Hawaii. Okay, Ms. Cat Brady. <clears throat> Aloha, Chair Luke, Vice Chairs, and members of the committee. Cat Brady um, with Community Alliance on Prisons. I'm a justice advocate, um, but I'm also Vice President of the Drug Policy Forum of Hawaii. And the Drug Policy Forum was one of the movers and shakers that actually pushed for this program to pass in 2000. Um, I've also been a caregiver to many, many people where I know that marijuana has relieved their suffering. They were on all sorts of really heavy narcotics that made them um, in a stupor where uh, medical marijuana re relieved their suffering. So this is really a public health program and it should be in the health department. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other testifiers? Yes, please come up. Let okay. me just apologize for not having submitted written testimony, and I will do that to the clerk, and I don't know if she needs a card. Um, my name's James Anthony, Jr. I'm um, an attorney in California where I've spent eight years working on uh, medical marijuana regulations, and it is certainly the case uh, in, among California local jurisdictions and other states in the union uh, with medical marijuana programs that, in general, um, uh, health department oversight uh, is is the norm and compared to those uh, few instances where there's uh, public safety oversight it seems to be a better fit just in terms of uh, uh, a regulatory program with uh, registration and, and and some degree of um, of uh, uh, controlled <coughs> substance and land use issues uh, it's often uh, somewhat awkward for law enforcement uh, because of their um, um, uh, jurisdictional issues with federal law so um, I uh, applaud the, the committee and, and the bill's author in moving that forward and uh, uh, I will submit some written testimony thank you thank you and the back well, Department of Health uh, good afternoon chair Luke um, members of the committee uh, David Sakamoto, Deputy Director of Health. I'm testifying for the Director, Loretta Fuddy. Um, I'm going to, in the interest of time, I'll paraphrase this. Um, and I do apologize for not submitting this current testimony. I think you still have two <coughs> previous uh, <coughs> copies. So copies are on the way. Um, actually, do you? It's dated February 22nd. Do you have that? testimony no okay um, most of our testimony here will be uh, directed at the logistics as director Sakai said um, when we move it over it will require us to be ready to accept it and to operate the program uh, otherwise we will have a gap period and people will wind up backlogged and that's no good okay oh. so um, okay now go ahead Pardon me? Oh, no, I was going to just tell the members that um, their testimony is about three pages from the last page, if you want to find it. Okay. It's the one um, dated February the 22nd? Yes, we have that. So okay. you don't have to resubmit. Oh, great. Um, so we put in dollar amounts for the first uh, years in terms of hiring staff to do the rules and other administrative tasks. We need to um, develop a database and uh, IT systems to make everything work with the appropriate safety measures and uh, protections. And um, when we actually do start, we will need to have uh, a special fund to put the fees into. And that will actually have to be funded because all of the monies to run the program will come from that source. Um, we don't want G funds just the way that PSD doesn't need G funds, but we will need some startup monies to be able to run the program. Mm -hmm. 
but the other material is more detail oriented. I'm not going to go through every little thing, um, but we will be happy to answer questions. Okay, thank you. Any other testifiers? If not, questions, members, Representative Cullen. <coughs> Director Sakai. Testimony stuck in the um, how much does it cost to run the current program right now? You know, I really don't have that with me right now. I know we have about two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars in the fund, um, but we have one staff, and then the rest of the NED staff uh, perform tasks associated with administering the. The, the program on an as-need basis, so, so several of the staff contribute. So it's really difficult for us to really parcel out the, what, what the exact cost is. So can you get uh, at least the committee a... Yes. A, how much it annually, how much it costs annually? Because you said it's, it's as an as-needed... Uh, yeah, we, so. we, can, we can do that. I'll get that information to the committee as soon as possible. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Representative Jordan. Director. Yes. You said currently, following up on Representative Collins' question, you have money in a special fund? Yes. Is that a special fund linked to other funds in your it department? or is That's it correct. We have a, the Narcotics Enforcement Division has a special fund which enables it to collect uh, uh, fees for a, from a variety of sources, including pharmacists, et cetera, who register to, on prescription drugs. So we placed the, the the money from medical marijuana registrants into that fund and we of course we carefully account for for every dollar okay so the the previous testifiers you said they mm -hmm. pay 25 dollars a year we, we pay 25 dollars a year the law allows us to go up to 35 but uh, I, I understand we have to amend our rules to, in order to raise the fee and we're in the process of doing that okay so the 25 dollar goes into your special fund that's correct do you have any calculations on the 25 collected and how much it costs to run your program? No, I don't have that, but that's, that's information I will get to you. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank sure. you. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Representative Takayama followed by Representative Ward. Uh, Ted, uh, uh, just question. doing quick math, you said you have about $275,000 a that's year collected from... Um, a $25 a year fee. So doing quick math, that amounts to about 11,000 registered me medical marijuana users. Is that right? I understand it's uh, it's closer to 12,000, if not over 12,000 by now. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with mechanics, but couldn't you transfer the, the funds that are from the registered medical marijuana users to the Department of Health? That, the that's of exactly what we intend to do if this bill should pass. Okay. So that would take care right. of the DOH's request. They, they said they needed about $100,000 to start up the program. Well, we're not sure. That's how much we, we collect annually, I believe. But, but I think uh, what we need to do is do a careful projection of, of how much we're going to collect, what our expenses are. Uh, in response to Representative Cullen and Representative Jordan's questions, mm -hmm. and see how much we, we at, when the time at the time of transfer, how much we we project will be remaining that we can move over to the Department of Health. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you. Representative Ward. Thank you. Uh, in further seeking clarification, as I read the bill, it looks like you're transferring personnel, machines, everything, paper clips, and everything. I mean, it's like <laughs> everything is in there. Yeah, and how many people are actually working in your department now on the medical marijuana? Program? I believe we have one person who is full time dedicated to this, and like I said, other other staff people uh, contribute to the, the functioning of the program on an as need basis. But I just don't know how much time the other staff contributes. So it must be low maintenance. One person is doing eleven thousand. Well, it's pretty intensive. Uh, you know, it's. Uh, uh, we've we've had some problems in administering the program because of lack of staffing. What are the so major responsibilities that you have? Making sure that the uh, keeping up with the registrations, make sure the registration cards go out on time, uh, updating our data c <coughs> database, uh, maintaining this database because it's getting to be quite large, making sure that the law enforcement officials uh, 
uh, we can respond to law enforcement officials on an as-need basis so that users are not uh, uh, arrested for possession of marijuana, that, that kind of thing. Mm. Thank you very much. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Representative Cullen. Director, real quick, um, could we uh, also get the information for the uh, specific special fund name? That the, I'm sorry. Fee, the fees are being dis deposited into that special fund. The, you the said, name right? of the Can fund. Can we get the sure. name of that fund too? Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Representative Tokioka. Thank you, Chair. Um, is there anyone here from the police department? Is there anyone outside? No. No. Okay. Well, um, I just think for you know people who are watching and for the police department or members of the uh, the men and women that were here earlier. I wouldn't want the comments to go from Mr. Bernie on record without any defense. And I think that we all know when there's things happening, when there's these tsunamis happening, the police and the fire department are the people that run into the, the scenes of the incidents and crimes. And I, I wouldn't want this committee to seem like we don't care about the men in blue because I know everyone does. And I didn't think the comments by Mr. Bernie were appropriate. So thank, thank you. you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Representative Jordan. Health, department of Health. Mr. Sakamoto, Dr. Sakamoto. In your testimony that we've now found, <laughs> it says fiscal income implications are uh, 100,000 for 1314 and 200,000 for the 1415 years. Um, in hearing what Director Sakai has said, uh, they charge $25 a year with 12,000 applicants. Um, in my mind, that's 300,000 already that they're collecting to operate this fund. And they're currently looking at um, increasing that fee. So I'm kind of seeing we might have those funds to run this program without, what I'm hearing here is you're asking for additional funds to set this up. Um, we need monies to start the program. Um, we actually don't care what the source is. It could come from their special fund. That would be fine. But we just need to have adequate capital. Otherwise, you can't run anything. So um, and it's not just 100000 It's, you know, there's, um, we've broken it down by time so that we know how much we need at what time. So it does add up to a substantial amount of money, unfortunately. We do have a detailed budget, so we can send that to you with the timeline as, if you want. Okay. Terrific. Representative Onishi. Um, Follow-up question. Um, I guess you've heard the testimony of Director uh, Sakai. And in your uh, testimony, you're asking for five permanent full-time positions? That's what we feel we need to run the program. Um, what, uh, you can ask Director Sakai how they actually run it. it it's a little different than what we're going to be able to do. Um, so we don't have other staff that we could just take from someplace else and hand them these responsibilities. These would have to be new people. Okay, I guess my question is, were you in consultation with the Pu Department of Public Safety in drafting your budget? We've been discussing um, matters with them, but we wanted to look at it from our standpoint independently first to find out really what we thought it would really cost, what it would take to run this. Okay. We know we know that it does, on average, take 20 to 30 minutes per application. Okay. In your testimony, you also say the to raise the minimum allowable registration fee from $35 to 50 annually commencing July 1st, 2015. Um, just wait, wait. I'm oh, sorry. My, my question is currently they're collecting 25 with the ability to go up to 35. And your projection here is that you needed 185,000 funds for some source beginning July 15 to pay for salaries and other program costs, but $50 at 12,000 patients would uh, would bring you $600,000 That would be the cap. We want a $50 cap. We would charge probably less. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? If not, oh, 
Did you have a question? Oh, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? If not, let's recess for decision making while we grab whoever is not here. Two, I'm sorry, House Bill 668, House Draft 1. Um, we will be passing this out as a HD2, and um, as recognized by Ms. Lichty, our drafting agency did a pretty terrific job in also recognizing that section that potentially transfer all um, rows of public safety to public health. So what we're going to do is on page 2, uh, we will be deleting the first sentence of Section 4, which states that all rights, powers, functions, and duties of the Department of Public Safety are transferred to the Department of Health. So we will be deleting that portion. Rest of that Section 4 will go as a subsection under Section 2, because Section 2 is the portion which talks about transfer of duties relating to the medical marijuana program. Um, so Section 2 will have subsection A for the original portion and this subsection 4 as subsection B to section 2. You guys got that? Yeah. Okay, thank you. And then in addition to that, we will be adding the DHERD amendment because that specified that exempt position will be transferred accordingly, otherwise exempt position um, will be lost. In addition to that, we will be creating a revolving fund into the Department of Health to accept funds from Department of Public Safety and any other funds that they can use to administer this program. And we were able to get prior concurrence from both the health chair and the public safety chair. So I thank both chairs for being available today. Okay, so any discussion and effective date? Yes. Suggestion. Can you put in the committee report to look into the um, why they need one position versus five when they're doing the exact same thing? I think that's a really good point, and so maybe we should put in the committee report that uh, we will be waiting from the Department of Health as to the justification for what they are planning to do or what they require to administer and why um, further justification and why they're asking for those positions. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other, any other questions? No, if not. Okay, House Bill 668, HD2, any WRs or no's? Okay, Toki Oka, WR. Reservations. Colin. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, meetings adjourned. And why don't we just take a, a five minute break before we start the three o'clock agenda with the um, members indulgence as well.